In this video, I will show you how to create a daily reward system in Roblox Studio. I'd appreciate it if you consider subscribing to help out the channel for more game development videos. Let's begin. I'll continue from the chest opening project. It is on the card and also in the description. I changed the project's name to daily reward and saved it to Roblox. Let me remind you the chest opening. When the player enters the ring, the chest opens and it closes when the player exits the ring. We will add a meaning to that in this video. There will be a daily reward that will be given to each user in preset time intervals. It is typically every 24 hours since this is a daily reward, but you can do it in any time interval you want, more or less frequent. First, I add some GUI elements to the chest because I want to show some feedback to the user. I go to workspace, chest and add a billboard GUI. And to the billboard GUI, I'll add a frame. I'll change the frame's name to mainframe for clarity. For the size, I won't use any offset. The scale will be 1 in X and Y. For the billboard GUI, I'll set the Adorni as the chest button mesh. Adorni defines which base part a surface GUI is attached to. So it will take the position values from the chest button. And I'll adjust its studs offset as 10 in Y axis. It will be 10 studs above the chest button. I'll adjust its size as well. No offset for scale 8 and 2 in X and Y. Another thing I want to change is light influence. I set it to zero so that it is not influenced by changing light conditions. Since this is a GUI, it is a good practice. Now let's add some text. To the main frame, I add a text label, rename it as label, set its size as 1 in X and Y with no offsets so that the label fills all the space. I select text scaled for the text to fill all the space as well. So this will be our billboard GUI. As you can see, it is about the chest and can be seen from any angle. Now let's create some functionality with scripts. I add my first script to the server script service because I want to handle this on the server side. I rename it as daily reward. Here we should keep track of the users. Whenever a player is added, we should check its data for the last time a reward was given to that specific player. We will add a function that checks the difference between the current time and the time a reward was last given to that player and grant the reward to the player if there is enough difference. And we will create a remote function to check the availability of the reward when the player opens the chest. Let's start with keeping track of the user rewards. Here I will use the player service. I'll add player service dot player edit and I'll connect to that with a function named onPlayerEdit. I'll do the same for player removing and I'll connect with the function onPlayerRemoving. I'll create these functions now. Local function onPlayerEdit, it will automatically get the player information which player is being added. Similarly, local function onPlayerRemoving, again it will get the player information which player is getting removed. When a player is added, we will check if there is data for that player of the last time they received daily reward. And if so, we will collect that data. To do that, first I will get the user ID. So local player ID is equal to, we know the player, just edit, dot user ID. This is a unique identifier for each player, so we will use that identifier to store data in our table. We could have also used the name of the player, that's unique as well. But players are able to change their names, hence it is better to use user id as it is persistent. Here I'll use the data store service. Data store service lets us store persistent data between sessions. It can be items in a player's inventory or their skill points. Local data store service is equal to game column get service data store service. I'll also create a data store for that. Local daily reward data is equal to data store service which I just created, column get data store and we need to use a name here, I'll type daily reward data. So this will be our data store. An important thing we need to do if we are using the data store service is to go to settings, home, game settings, click security and enable enable studio access to API services option. This includes data stores so we need to enable this. Now we can use the functions to get information from the data store or write data to the data store. Here we'll check if there is any existing information belonging to a player using this player ID. Local success, receive data and key info and I'll create a function inside pcall. pcall means protected call. It catches any error a function may throw and instead of stopping the execution of a script it lets us handle it manually. 
I'll create the function inside pcall and it will return the function that I want, which is daily reward data column get async player ID, because we are using the player ID as the key for that data. Get async returns the latest value of a provided key. Here we'll expect a return and we can check if it was successful. So if it was returned as a success and if there is received data, this is great, then we can place that information into a table that we'll create. As that means there is no data for that user. So here we need to add a default value for that user. I'll create a table here to keep track of the player's last reward activation time. So local player last daily reward is equal to a table. If there is data received from the data store, I'll add that to the table with player ID. It will be received data. But if there is no information received from the data store, I'll set it to zero which represents a very old time, so it will definitely be greater than zero, hence we'll give the player their reward if they open the chest. So this is what we'll do when a player is added to the game. We also need to save the data when the player quits the game. I'll do a very similar thing. Local success error message equals to p call, I'll type function and return again daily reward data. This time I'll use set async. Set async sets the latest value, user IDs and metadata for a given key. It asks for two information. The first is the key. I'll use player ID. And it asks for the information to be stored. It will be player last daily reward player ID. This is how we add it to the data store. Also, we can get rid of this in our local table and set it to nil. This covers how we can read and write data to data store. We now need to create a remote function to communicate with the local chess script. Remote functions enable two-way communication. It can send information across the server client boundary and then wait for a response from the other side. Here inside replicated storage, I'll create a remote function. I'll rename it as daily reward activated. And here let's get that function. Local daily reward activated is equal to game.replicatedStorage.dailyRewardActivated. This is the remote function that we have just created. I'll use its variable on server invoke. It refers to a function that we'll implement. I'll type on daily reward activated. I'll create that function. Local function on daily reward activated. Again, this is a remote function, so we can get the player information. Here, we'll check if the user is eligible for a reward. I'll create a local variable called current time, which will be equal to os.time. OS time returns how many seconds have passed since the Unix epoch, which is January 1st, 1970, 000 under current UTC time. And we need the player ID. We can get similarly. Local player ID is equal to player.user ID. Let's use math.floor to deal with integers here. Math.floor returns the largest integer smaller than or equal to the argument we passed in. And I'll write if current time minus player last daily reward with the index of player ID is greater than a value, let's call it reward wait time, I'll set it in a minute. If this is the case, we'll set the player last daily reward player ID to current time because we are giving the reward and we are updating the last daily reward time. And we'll return true, as we'll return false. Let's create this and set it to 24 hours, which will be 24 times 60 times 60. For the time being, let's comment this out and make this shorter for easier debugging. Otherwise, it would take forever to test. Let's use 20 seconds. So we'll give a reward every 20 seconds. Nice. We are done with the basic functionality of the daily reward script, but we want to use its functionality in the chess script. I open the chess script. Let's create some variables for that. Below these, let's write a comment that says daily reward code. Then I'll type local mainframe is equal to chess model column wait for child billboard GUI and again column wait for child mainframe. We will turn mainframe on or off by changing its visible property. We'll also have a label which will be mainframe column wait for child label. We'll change the content of the label based on the information we have. Also, very similar to the previous one, I'll type local daily reward activated. This will be the remote function we have created. Game.replicatedStorage.dailyreward activated. And we'll fire that remote function when necessary. So these are the variables that we'll use. 
Let's create another function here, local function check reward. This will ask for a result from the daily reward script that we have created. I'll type local result is equal to daily reward activated column invoke survey and it will return me the result as true or false and based on the result I'll give the reward. If result is true then reward is granted. Let's create a variable here local is granted and use that. Is granted is equal to true and we'll change the labels text to reward granted. Else is granted will be false and label.txt will be not yet. So this is how we can change the text based on the result of the check that is done in the daily reward script. But we need to call that check reward somewhere. Let's do it here because when the player enters the collider the chest opens. Under the twin open line I'll call check reward. I'll also make mainframe GUI visible. So mainframe.visible equals true. When the player exits the collider I'll make it false. In the beginning we'll be outside so I'll go to the game editor, select mainframe and disable visible to make it invisible at the start. Let's play and see how it behaves. Let's enter, it reads reward granted. If we exit and enter again it reads not yet. We keep seeing not yet until 20 seconds is up. And after 20 seconds another reward is granted. It works well but it doesn't give enough feedback to the player, right? We need to give more information such as remaining time. We can do this in our daily reward script. Here instead of returning true we can return multiple values. We will first return true or false based on the rewards availability for that player and also I'll return the remaining time until the next reward which is especially important for the else block when the reward isn't yet available for the player. So here I'll type player last daily reward player id this is the information we received and stored inside the player last daily reward table and I'll add to that reward wait time. This will be the next time that the reward will be available. Here I can use current time plus reward wait time. We won't really use that information if it returns true because we'll just give the reward and we won't show the remaining time until they exit and enter again. Let's go back to the chess script and use this information. Instead of getting only result I'll add next time here. It will show the next time the reward will be given. Here in the else block I'll show the remaining time instead of simply saying not yet. Instead of this let's type label.txt equals we cannot directly use the remaining time because it is in seconds form we need to make some calculations to convert it to hours minutes and seconds. Let's use a function named get remaining time and let's pass in next time. Let's create that function here local function get remaining time it will take in underscore next time as a parameter. I'll create local remaining sec which will be underscore next time minus os time. This is the remaining time until the next reward in terms of seconds. Let's create another one for hours. Local hours equals math.floor so it will be an integer not float remaining sec divided by 3600 which is 60 times 60. And let's create one for minutes. Local min equals math.floor to get the integer value. I'll pass in remaining sec minus hours times 3600. This is the remaining seconds when we deduct the hours. I'll divide it by 60 to convert to minutes. Very similarly, I'll type local sec equals math.floor remaining sec minus hours times 3600 minus minutes times 60. We don't have to divide it by anything because this is in seconds. We will return a string. Let's use remaining time colon. We need to format that so string.format. I'll use percentage 02d colon percentage 02d colon percentage 02d. This will display the hours, minutes and seconds in two digits format and with columns in between. Let's check out how it works. Reward granted. If I exit and enter again it shows 18 seconds, exit and enter again it shows 14, 20 seconds is still a long time so let's go back and make it 10. Play again, reward granted, 8 seconds, 6 seconds, 4 seconds, 2 seconds, 0 and reward granted. It works but did you notice the problem here? Yeah, it doesn't show the remaining time in real time. So let's fix that. To have an active timer, I'll use run service. 
Round service contains methods and events for time management. In my chess script, I'll type local round service is equal to game column get service round service. And here I'll type round service dot heartbeat. Heartbeat fires on every frame after the physics simulation is completed. I'll connect to that with a function named update remaining time. I'll create that function here, local function update remaining time, and I'll update the remaining time in this function. I need to get the next reward time here, so let's create another variable called next reward time. Whenever we get the next time, I'll set it to next reward time, so we'll be able to use it in this function. And I'll only do it if mainframe is visible to make it more optimized. So if mainframe.visible is true, and also we don't need to do this if is granted is true, because we'll only display reward granted then. So let's do another if statement. If is granted is not true, I'll update label.txt with get remaining time passing in next reward time. Let's see how it works. Reward granted. And now it's counting down in real time. <laughs> it goes below zero instead of giving the reward, so let's fix that too. We can use math.max for that, which returns the maximum of two values. So remaining sec is equal to math.max remaining sec zero. It will return the greater value between remaining seconds and zero. Let's see. Reward granted. It counts down. And it stops at zero. But we can do better guys. If it hits zero while the player is inside, we should give them what they have earned. They waited inside patiently. To do that, in the chess script, inside the update remaining time function, let's create an if statement. If next reward time is equal to os.time, which means that we hit the correct time, then we'll call check reward again so that it activates everything and grants the reward. Let's see how it works. Reward granted. It counts down. 3, 2, 1. 0 and reward granted again. So we don't need to exit and enter again to collect rewards. A player waiting inside a ring for 24 hours will not be that common for daily rewards of course, but what if they enter the ring only 3 seconds before their next reward activation time? We should do good work and cater for these extreme cases. Let's go back to our daily reward script and activate our 24 hour timer to make this an actual daily reward system. Let's play. We are getting data from data store, so it tells us that it didn't really buy it. We were just here getting a reward 30 seconds ago. For the remaining time until the next reward, it shows just a little below 24 hours. If I stop and play again, we'll see that the remaining time is persistent. It continues from where it left off and it doesn't start over. Because we are using data store and we keep track of the last time when a player received a reward. So this is how you can implement a daily reward system in Roblox Studio. If you enjoyed the video, please like and consider subscribing to support the channel for more videos. If you want a new game development tutorial, let me know down in the comments. You can get access to the Roblox project file from Patreon. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.